Beveling is one of the most basic um, actions in in leather carving. It is um, what takes one side of the leather down, well, that makes the rest stand up. Um, before I show you there, maybe I should just show you a demo here on a line. Um, and I'll show it to you from this angle. Now, I am sitting here where this indicator is. This is my, what I see. I see it from this side. Why I show you that is that you want the cut line, so I've cut, between you and the beveler. Now the beveler, let's see, show it to you this way. You see the beveler has a distinct toe on one side. That side is going to stamp the leather deeper than the back. Okay. The idea of that is that you're going to keep this tool completely upright. You never lean this tool backward. You can lean it forward in some cases to make a smaller impression, but you never lean it backwards. Also, I can show you this angle. You seldom lean it sideways like this. It always stands pretty much upright, maybe sometimes lean forward. You want this front toe of the beveler right on that cut line so that the tool affects only one side of that cut line and so that's where you're going to work like that a uh, few rules here um, for every length of this tool or width of this tool that you're moving. So if I move from there to there, how wide this tool is, I want this tool to be hit quite a few times by the mallet, like in a jackhammer fashion. That way, your beveling surface is the smoothest. So I, I know you can't see the mallet, but um, just listen for its taps. quite often is how I tap it. So, um, also the mallet itself is um, not held like a hammer. It, I keep it between my thumb and forefinger so it swings smoothly and with a wrist action I just do a quick jackhammer action on the tool. And you can go over that edge quite a bit. You don't have to do it all in one. You can do it back and forth. Make sure your hand rests on the leather and is not floating in the air. If I can show you my little finger there, you see is providing support it's resting on the leather and you know you got to trim your little fingernail when it leaves little impressions as you go along um, so your your hand must rest on the leather you can't just float in the air and expect to have control over the two so there you go now that's basic beveling now in this case, in our design, I you tool from the top down. In other words, this flower petal here is on top of this one. This one is kind of underneath that one. And so I'm going to do this top one first. And, so, and you ignore any lines that come in halfway uh, underneath that 
pickle. So I'm going to turn the leather so that I can see the front face of this tool and there we go I turn it because I want to always keep that line between me and the tool like this so that I can see that the front edge of that tool is in that cut line But slower around the corners in these bends. Okay. Give you a view of what I see. And that flower petal carries on its back, starts over there. And let me turn it this way so you can see what I see. Oh, that's a song, isn't it? But here we go. carefully following the line all the time. From close up, that's what it looks like now. And you just do one line at a time, deciding what side of the line to do the beveling on. And the other side, obviously, will be the one that looks raised up. And that's basic beveling.